Hello everyone. Welcome to Theory of Programming. In this video, I'm going to explain the tri tree data structure, which is a very fast and easy to implement search tree. So let's get started. A tri tree is used to query if a word exists in a bag of words. What does that mean? So let's say you were given these collection of words there, this, that, those, them. Now, a tri tree will help you answer queries asking if a certain word exists or not very, very quickly. So you can ask the tri tree, um, does that exist in the input? Yes, it does. Okay, then does these exist in the input? Mm, nope, it doesn't. The tri tree will help you answer questions like these very, very quickly. So it is best suited in situations where you had to answer like a million of these queries. Now think about it. How would you answer these queries in a brute force manner? You would have to iterate each word in the bag of words and see if that's the word we want. That is pretty slow. So let's see how a tri tree makes this faster. To keep things simple, consider a bag of words with saw and see. Now, how do I draw a tri tree for this? So these are the rules. Let's go through these rules one by one and see how they have been applied to the tri tree figure on the right. Now, the basic structure of a tri tree is that each node in the tri tree corresponds to a single alphabet. As you can see in the figure on the right, each node, excepting for the root node that is, every node in the tri tree corresponds to some alphabet. Now, the idea behind the tri tree data structure is that every path from root to leaf will be a word in the input bag of words. So as you can see in this figure, there are two root to leaf paths, one and two. S A W. This corresponds to the input word saw and S E A. This corresponds to the input word C. Each node can have up to 26 children where each child corresponds to a single alphabet. So as you can see for this node, we have two children, A and E, because that was our input. But let's say our input had another word, let's say sun, S-U-N. Then we would have another node corresponding to U and it would have another node corresponding to N. So going by this principle, we can see that every node can have at most 26 children, where obviously each child node corresponds to a single alphabet. The next rule is the path will be shared for words which start with the same set of alphabets. So in our input bag of words, saw and C have S in common. And we can see that S is a shared node for the path SAW and SEA. Nodes which are word endings are marked differently. So we can see that SAW, the last node W is marked in green and SEA the last node A is also marked in green. This is done so that programmatically we have a way to differentiate that a certain node is a word ending and a certain node would not be a word ending. The next rule is that children of each node are ordered from A to Z from left to right. And as we can see, we have ordered these two nodes left to right from A to Z. So this is a tri tree which holds two words saw and see. Now, they are not the golden rules. I've put them up so that you can have a starting point to begin draw a tri tree yourself. Now, as I stated, the idea behind the tri tree data structure is that every path from root to leaf will be a word in the input bag of words. But this is not true every time. There is a reason we still need to mark the word endings differently, that is, the green nodes. Now, consider this input bag of words. I suggest you to pause this video here and try to draw a tri tree based on the rules we just learned about. And I hope you did. So it would look like this. We have four root to leaf paths, which is one, two, three, and four. But we have five input words. You see, this node E is also a word ending. It is the word ending of the word the. So remember, tree nodes, which are word ending nodes, need not be the leaf nodes every time. Now, let us come to the coding part. 
If you have coded any tree data structure before, you must know that the most important part in coding a tree is to define its node. The node definition of a tree usually contains pointers to its children and holds some information like an integer. We discussed that the tri tree can have up to 26 children, one for each alphabet from A to Z. So the node definition has an array of 26 pointers which can point to 26 child nodes. We call this array children. And in our previous examples, we were marking some nodes green in color to indicate that it was a word ending. So programmatically, we can do that by putting a Boolean variable is word ending. So this is the definition of a tri tree node. I hope this looks simple to you, but I will take a couple of examples to show you how this node definition works for us. I came up with this ugly figure in hoping it would show you a small picture of how this class works in runtime. Suppose you had this try node, which is the root node, and this root node has one child element s. So this root node would obviously be an object of this class try node. And this is how its object would look in runtime. We know it's not a word ending, so its word ending would be false. It has one child s. So in this whole area of line 26 characters would be null references except the 19th element which corresponds to s has a reference to a child node. So I want you to understand that it's not like this child node stores the alphabet s. It is because the root's 19th reference points to this child node, we conclude that this child node represents the words which start with s. Now let us look at a slightly different example. Here I have a tri tree to my left. Just by looking at this tri tree, can you tell what are the words inserted into it? Well, the rule of thumb is that the number of words inserted into it will be equal to the number of words with E's word ending equals to true, which are essentially the green nodes. One, two, three. So the three words which are inserted into this tri tree are a single alphabet word A, Ash, and Ask. So if you examine the runtime snapshots of these nodes, this node A is a word ending, so its word ending is true and it has a child node corresponding to S. And similarly, this node S is not a word ending, so is word ending is false and it has two children corresponding to H and K, which are not null and the rest would be null. Lastly, H and K, they have no children at all, so all 26 references in the children array would be null for both these nodes and they are word endings. So the word ending is true for each of these nodes. There are two main operations which are performed on a tri tree, insertion operation and the query operation. Coming to insertion, insertion operation is very simple. We just traverse each alphabet of input word, create new nodes wherever required, and in the end, set E's word ending to true. This is a pseudocode for insertion operation. The input would be the root node of the tri tree and the word to be inserted. We will use the traf pointer to traverse the tree starting from the root. We have a for loop to iterate each alphabet in the input word. Inside the for loop, if the children array does not have a child corresponding to this alphabet, we create a new one and then we traverse to that child. When this for loop is done, we would have created all the nodes we would need. When we reach here, trav would be pointing to the last node. This is the node which needs to say is word ending equals to true. That might have been hard to digest. So let us dry run this pseudocode with an example. Let's say you wanted to insert the word the into this tri tree on the left. So your string input would hold the word the and your draft pointer would point to the root node. Now we enter the for loop. The loop variable alphabet would hold T. We see that the current node already has a child node corresponding to the alphabet T. So we don't enter the if condition. Now we will update the trav pointer to point to the child node corresponding to the alphabet T. Now we enter the second iteration of the for loop. The loop variable alphabet would now have the value H. Now the current node has no child node corresponding to the alphabet H. So we enter the if condition. We will create a new child node corresponding to the alphabet H. So our tri tree now looks like this. Next, we will update our trav pointer to point to the newly created child node 
which corresponds to the alphabet H. Now we come to the last iteration. A loop variable alphabet now holds the value E. The current node has no child node corresponding to the alphabet E. So we enter the if condition. We create a new child node corresponding to the alphabet E. So our try tree now looks like this. Now we will update our trap pointer to point to the newly created child node which corresponds to the alphabet E. We are done iterating the input word. So trav now points to the last node of the word. Thus, it needs to be marked as a word ending. We do that by setting is word ending to true. This is how we insert a word into our try tree. Now let us look at the query operation. In a query operation, you're given an input word and you must return true if the input word is present in the try tree and false if it is not. This is very very similar to the insertion operation we discussed just now. How? We keep traversing the try tree based on the input word similar to the insertion procedure. The input word will not be there in the try tree if there is no valid path or the node at the end of the path is not a word ending. Conversely, the input word will be in the try tree if there is a valid path and the node at the end of the path is a word ending. And this is the pseudocode for what I've written just here. It is very simple. So let's jump into an example. Let's say you are asked to query if the word so is present in this try tree here. Let's try run this code. Let's try run this pseudocode for this input try tree. Initially, our trav pointer would be pointing to the root node and the string input word will have the word so. We will iterate the input word as before. The loop variable alphabet will have the value of S. Now, the root node does have a child node corresponding to alphabet S. So, we will update our trav pointer to point to this child node. Now, please note that if this node weren't even there, then we could straight away say that the word so is not present in the try tree. We do this by immediately returning false. The loop variable alphabet now holds the value of O. The current node was having a child node corresponding to alphabet O. So we update our trav pointer to point to this child node. Now our traversal is done. So we come to the final test. This node O is not a word ending. If we look at the try tree, it was just a part of the word sun. So we return false. This is how we query if a word is present in a try tree or not. Now let us talk about the performance of a try tree. Insertion operation will always take order of L time, where L is the length of the word to be inserted. This is because we have a for loop which runs for as long as the input word was, and we are doing constant time taking operation inside that for loop. Query operation also takes order of L time in the worst case. As seen in the example before, we could end up traversing the whole word taking order of L time and then fail or pass in the final word ending check. These time complexities are very fast if you want to insert say a thousand words and query a million times. But the downside is that the try tree has a very bad space complexity. Its worst case space complexity would be order of C to the power of L where C is the range of characters like A to Z and L is the maximum length of words in the input. Now, during the scope of this video, I only considered the range of characters to be A to Z, but you could also have a range small a to small z and capital A to capital Z, in which case your children array would be of the length 52. So let's say you wanted to insert a bag of words where the maximum length is 5. Then your try tree can have up to 26 power 5 plus 1 nodes. If you do the math, that is 1, 1, 8, 8, 1, 3, 7, 6 nodes, which is a lot. Sorry, 7. And the point is each node itself consumes quite a lot of space. Each node has 26 pointers. And if you consider pointer to be an unsigned integer, which is 64 bits plus a Boolean, consider it to be one bit, although it's compiler dependent, you would have to multiply this by 1665. And that turns out to be around 2.4 GB which is huge. So I'm not trying to discourage you. Usually you won't inflate your try tree to a complete tree, but this is something to watch out for.
A tri tree can be modified to solve a lot of problems. This is the simplest form of the tri tree which we have been seeing till now. It specializes in querying the existence of a word. If we use a string instead of the boolean variable, then your tri tree can act as a dictionary where the string would store the meaning of the word. If a certain node does not have any meaning, it could indicate that the node is not a word ending and vice versa. If we use an integer instead of the boolean variable, then we can even tell the index of the queried word in the initial input bag of words. If a certain node's index is minus one, it could mean that the node is not a word ending and vice versa. So you can modify the try tree to suit your problem statement. I hope my explanation so far made sense. Now let us go through the code. The codes are available on my GitHub. I will leave a link in the description below. This is a try tree nodes definition. As we discussed, it has a boolean variable is word ending, a children array, which holds 26 references to child nodes. We'll come back to the main method in a moment. Let us look at the insert word method. This is just as per the pseudocode we discussed. We begin traversing from the root node and we iterate through each alphabet in the input word. If there is no child node associated with the alphabet, we create a new one. If you notice, to get the reference associated with a particular alphabet, I did this alphabet minus character A. What does this do? Suppose the alphabet has the value of S. ASCII value of character S is 115, but you want it to be 19 since you your target is the 19th element in the children array. So to get that, I simply subtracted the ASCII value of character A from it. So 115 minus 97 gives me 18, which selects the 19th element in the children array. And then we traverse to the child associated with that alphabet. In the end, I set A's word ending to true. Coming to the query word method, even this is just as per the pseudocode we discussed. We begin traversing from the root. We iterate through each alphabet in the input word. And if the child node associated with the alphabet is not null, we traverse to it, otherwise we return false. And in the end, we check if our trav pointer is not null and if trav pointer is pointing to a word ending. Actually, now that I look at this, we don't need this condition since we are already checking it here. Feel free to raise a pull request for this. So coming to our main method, I demonstrate the use of this by creating a root node and then inserting a bunch of words into it and then querying my try tree if certain words are there or not there like the word a has to be there ash has to be there as should not be there b should not be there bin should be there then i insert the word b and then i ask the try tree again is the word b there this time it should return true so let's run this code. I have copied it to ideon, but keep in mind, don't run it right away. You need to remove this public so that ideon doesn't complain. Let's run this. So as you can see, the word A was there, Ash was there, As wasn't there, B wasn't there, Bin was there. And since I inserted the word B, now try to say it is there. Thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, please hit the like button. And if you like the content on my channel, please hit the subscribe button and the little bell next to it so that you get notified whenever I post a new video.